What's up guys, CP Modder here back with another video and RAM disks have been around for quite some time in fact with the introduction of RAM disks being back in the days when RAM capacities weren't exactly that high but it was awesome to have super fast storage. However, with the introduction of SSDs like the 970 EVO and 970 Pro, are RAM disks really still relevant for super fast storage? So today, we're going to go ahead and find out. Now back when RAM disks first started to gain a little bit more traction than what they originally had and some more than what they do have today, they were really only low capacities with most people only running maybe a maximum of 8 gigs of RAM with the very few at 12 or 32 gigs of RAM depending on what system they had at the time. In fact, there wasn't really that many people running 32 or even 64 gigs of RAM back when these RAM disks were more popular, mainly because DDR3 and subsequently DDR2 just didn't have the density. But here in 2018 with RAM, like a single stick of RAM holding like 16 gigs of memory, what can we actually do with these RAM disks? Are they still even relevant? And how much performance do we actually get out of these when compared to just standard really fast NVMe drives? This is also to help by the fact that some gamers and actually a lot more gamers these days are buying 32 gigs of RAM for their gaming rigs because they might want to stream down the line. So there's a lot of RAM going into a lot of systems, meaning, hey, everyone has some extra RAM for super fast storage. Now, yes, not everyone's dropping 32 gigs of RAM in their next gaming rig, but even 16 gigs of RAM is still enough to portion off a little bit of it for some super fast storage. So we went ahead and started testing. I grabbed my desktop PC which runs 32 gigs of DDR4 RAM at 2133 megahertz, which is a perfect example for this particular setup. I downloaded a RAM disk software being AMD's RAM disk software and went to town. Now yes, there are a lot of different RAM disk software options out there from free ones to paid ones, all that kind of stuff. I picked up the AMD one mainly because because I've had experience with it before and I had a key from such a while ago that still managed to actually work today. Otherwise, I would have had a look around uh, as to what other softwares are there. Hey, AMD may not be the best, but for today's testing, I had a key lying around, so I did go ahead and run with that. But if you do want some links, I'll try and leave some links to some other free software down in the description box. So that's our RAM disk setup. And also too, for the SSD that we're gonna be comparing it with, we grabbed ourselves the Samsung 970 Pro SSD. This is the fastest SSD that I've tested on the channel so far, which is really, really fast at that. So, pretty simple. Run Crystal Disk Mark and some other synthetics, run some games and see what we do get. And speaking of that, let's jump into our first set of tests. With Crystal Disk Mark, damn, these are really, really fast numbers. Like, unbelievably fast numbers. DDR4 RAM has some really fast throughputs and it's kind of unsurprising with the 2133 MHz kit that we do have here today, theoretically able to transfer 19.2 gigabytes of second of data through the RAM connection. And if we went for a fast kit, say 3200 MHz, we could see up to 25.6 gigabytes per second. So if I had have had a faster kit of uh, RAM in my system, I could have got even more numbers here. And with the 5,445 4 megabytes per second reads and 7,382 megabytes per second writes on the sequential. These are absolutely insane numbers. Numbers I have not seen before other than only on a RAM disk. And actually, this is faster than the last RAM disk that I did set up. That's why I had a copy of AMD's RAM disk software before because I've actually done this before with DDR3 RAM. But this absolutely takes the cake with the fastest type of storage I've ever gone ahead and tested. But hang on a second, if we jump back to those numbers, we actually see that there's a little bit of an anomaly with the RAM disk. And unfortunately, it fell flat when it came to 4K QDEP 32T1 tests, where the Samsung drive just was able to dominate in this department. But well, overall, uh, it was definitely not bad. And that Samsung drive actually did a good job in that department. Jumping to our Atto numbers, Again, it keeps blowing us away with all the different tests being the fastest set of numbers that I've ever seen. Synthetics are really awesome for this type of application. Honestly, before doing these actual tests and just sort of looking at my Samsung drive and looking at the RAM, I was expecting the RAM to be slightly faster, but damn, this is really, really fast. Our Samsung came back with about three gigabytes per second reads and about 2.5 gigabytes per second writes versus the five by seven, which is absolutely awesome. Now you may have noticed in the synthetic numbers 
that the drive is only 4 gigabytes in size and honestly let's face it 4 gigs isn't really going to be doing that much here in 2018. Now again because I do have the license I activated it and we went ahead and ran a 16 gigabyte drive. As I've only got 32 gigs of RAM, 16 gigs for well general RAM tasks and 16 gigs for accelerated gaming performance. So speaking of games let's go ahead and take a look there and Oh, hang on a second, there's a little bit of an issue here. Because we only have 16 gigs of RAM, I couldn't exactly load many games at all onto the actual RAM disk because they would just fill up completely. In fact, when I was doing pro applications, which we'll touch on in just a moment, I couldn't really put much on it either because the little capacity just absolutely filled up. So that was a little bit of a problem. However, the games that I was able to actually load up on this drive were pretty much not that much different from an NVMe drive. Games definitely did benefit slightly, they were slightly faster than the NVMe drive, but actually sitting down at the desk testing these numbers, I didn't find that much of a difference and honestly, going from RAM disk to super fast NVMe drive, sure the numbers show something, but when you're actually sitting there waiting for load screens, literally it's a blink of an eye difference between the NVMe drive and also to our RAM disk. So that was a little bit of a letdown. So okay then, let's go ahead and jump into pro applications where we might see a bit more of a benefit. And we also do have the exact same problem, because I couldn't exactly give enough storage to that RAM disk. I couldn't really put much on it, which didn't really give it that much of, well, use to the actual system. Don't get me wrong, 32 gigs of RAM is a lot of RAM, but when you divide that up into a drive and then your general system RAM, you're not really benefiting that much. In fact, whilst I was able to scrub through the timeline in Premiere Pro quicker, I wasn't able to open up as big projects because I've just lost half of my RAM. I was better off just using a standard mechanical hard drive and 32 gigs of RAM for Premiere Pro than I was using a RAM disk and 16 gigs for Premiere Pro. It just slowed down really, really badly. So, okay then, that does lead us to the question, what exactly could you do with this particular drive? And honestly, I couldn't think of a single idea to do with it, so I jumped online and a lot of people are saying, for the people who are actually using these RAM disks, that they just use them for things like caching files, paging files, and taking off excessive writes from their SSD. And that kind of makes sense because of RAM having, well, a lot more endurance than a standard typical SSD, we're not going to be running into the issues with RAM where you're just going to run out of writes like it would over on the SSD side. So I guess that does sort of give you one use case there, but if that wasn't enough, when you power down the system or if the power just suddenly flips off, you've lost everything in that RAM disk because the system wasn't able to shut down. So you can't store much on it, your system does suffer in terms of performance from pro applications, you can't load many games on it, it really isn't looking that great for our RAM disk here. And that brings us to the conclusion and a little bit of a TLDR. RAM disks, they are definitely fast and from our testing here today, 7 gigabytes per second is absolutely insane and is way faster than our NVMe SSD. And however, the NVMe SSD comes in at a fraction of the cost when it comes to price per gigabyte and whilst yes, there are larger kits of RAM these days which offer way more storage than what we did have just a few years ago, I still have to say there is very limited use cases for these particular systems. Even someone with 32 gigs of RAM, even maybe if you went up to 64 gigs of RAM, the actual drive that you could portion out of these RAM sticks isn't exactly that much storage for you, so you can't exactly store some games on it which kind of renders games useless, and if you want to go ahead and use it say as a scratch drive for video editing, other than filling it up really fast, like I was able to fit three clips on this guy from a GH5, which is not the world's biggest file size camera. You can't store much on it, and then when it comes to actually using the system, a lot of pro applications love their RAM, especially from Adobe. So taking away half of the RAM to give it as quick storage, you're better off just leaving the RAM there, and it just keeps going as you were, and you're better off just having a hard drive for all your mass storage. Again, the only real reason that I could actually see you needing a RAM drive is if you just wanted to have a super fast dumping ground for page files, caching files, or something like that. But then that does beg the question, why don't you just keep the RAM there for everything to be stored into RAM? Sure, you could make the argument that you might want to put a caching file or something like that on the RAM disk because RAM has a lot better endurance than your standard hard drive. However, if you were to run an SSD for five to seven years, you might only be saving five or four actual terabytes written from that drive. And most SSDs these days, even the cheapest stuff that we've checked out on the channel is rated for 70 plus terabytes of writes and more common mainstream guys from Seagate, uh, Samsung, SanDisk, all those guys are rated well over 100 
100 terabytes worth of writes over the entire life. So sure, you may be saving some writes from that SSD by using a RAM disk, but honestly, it's not going to make a difference either way. You'd be buying an entirely new computer before that RAM saving would actually make any difference right here. So I guess to conclude, RAM disks, are they worth in 2018? Really, I don't think so. The storage that you get and the price that you pay just isn't worth it when compared to a super fast NVMe drive. Sure, if you just happen to have 128 or 256 gigs of RAM lying around, sure, that might be a lot more helpful, but for most of us who are running 32, 16, or 64, depending on what kind of system you are running, it just really isn't worth it. But do let me know down in that comment section if you run a RAM disk. Maybe I'm completely wrong. Maybe there's some other use case that you do know of uh, that actually benefits from a RAM disk versus a lot of RAM and a super fast drive. So do let me know down below. If you want to play around with a RAM disk, I've left the AMD software that we did test out here today. There is a free version left down in that description box, along with the RAM kits that we did go ahead and use and test here today. And also to this Rip Jaws one that I'm holding up. So uh, yeah, you can check them down in in that description box. Guys, thanks all for watching, I'll catch you all in the next one.